All right, we're here at the Phoenix Comic Con coming to you 2016, hot as hell, Chris Gore. How did you, how did you end up here in this heat, in this desert heat? Uh, well, I drove in my car here in the heat, and uh, I don't know, I, just, I love Phoenix Comic Con. This is worth driving out to uh, for me because it's just one of those legit cons that attracts like, it, it has the feel of like a really small comic book convention, but it attracts like major talent to the con. So, and also some of the most enthusiastic, nerdy crowds. I mean, Thursday sold out. I've never heard of a Thursday at a con selling out other than San Diego Comic Con. So Phoenix Comic Con has to be the biggest con in, in the Southwest. I mean, it's huge. So but, last night you did a panel, gave out some DVDs. What was your take on the whole thing? Well, I was trying to like, like you know, every time when I go to these cons, because I've been coming to cons for years, right? So I've been coming to cons since I was a little kid, right? When there wasn't a Comic Con, there, there were like, uh, you'd go to the Detroit Auto Show, which is where I grew up in Detroit, and they'd have like, uh, here's the Detroit Auto Show, and then there's a room where we sell comic books, where they would you'd drop off the kids, like nerdy kids like me. But now, Comic Cons have become like a big event. It's huge. So my whole take on it is everybody wants to know like what I think about certain movie stuff, and I enjoy having a conversation with an audience. So the way I did the panel was just come up and ask me any question about, it was like basically a live ask me anything, right? And then every person who asked a question got a free DVD. I'm not going to say it was a good DVD, and I'm not sure I can repeat the name of the DVD that was given away. We, we can say it here. It was, it was Dick Shark, but what I'm saying is uh, it, it, uh, it, it's basically just an excuse to have a conversation with like-minded people about movies and nerd out about like movies you might have seen, opinions that might change your mind about something, or movies that you should know about that you'd never heard of. DC or Marvel? Okay, uh, when it comes to comics, DC. When it comes to movies, Marvel. Tricked you there. Oh, that is good. I like that one. All right, one more. Star Trek or Star Wars? Trek Wars. I can't, you're killing oh, me. Oh, man. You're okay, killing me. Okay, which movie did J.J. Abrams direct better? Which, which movie did he make better? I actually think that the first Star Trek was better than uh, Star Wars. I think the first 2009 Star Trek, I think, was a great reboot to that series, created a different timeline. It really got in depth with the characters. You know, we'd never seen a young Kirk, young Spock. Um, I like the 2009 Star Trek. I think The Force Awakens was okay. I don't think it was the greatest movie in the world, but it introduced like new characters that I really care about. So it was basically like Force Awakens was like the preamble to a movie that I really wanted to see. So I really want to see the second movie. So I guess that's success in, uh, you know, unto itself, but um, I actually prefer the 2009 Star Trek. Well, with the new Star Wars movie coming out, we have a new director, so do you think it's going to be something that's completely different, or do you think it's uh, 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 Ryan, or Ryan Johnson is just going to sort of borrow his stylings? Uh, I think it's going to be very different. I think Ryan Johnson's a different kind of filmmaker. I hope that it's in the style of a Star Wars movie. Give me the wipes. Give me the you know all of the what what you know should be in a Star Wars film. But um, I have I have faith in Ryan Johnson. Well, here's the deal. Like I mean, JJ had a lot to do with Episode Seven. He had to bring back the old fans. He had it's sort of a a, a sequel and a reboot, right? because he's bringing in all these new characters, but honoring the old characters, but then telling a new story. So I think that the thing about Force Awakens is the story isn't the important part. What the important part is the characters. And I think that on that level, I think he really succeeded. But uh, I hope we never see another Death Star again. I think, should we, can we be done with Death Stars? We've had three yeah. so far? It's not exciting anymore. It's not exciting. We know they're gonna blow it up. Give it up. And can we get rid of going to desert planets? Yeah, I mean, I, well, this is the thing I'm worried about because I've been seeing some stuff online about Episode Eight, and I just think how many planets in the Star Wars universe are planets with green trees and forests? Everything's got a for Like, what I loved about what Lucas did was every planet had a different Tone. landscape. There was volcanic, there was, you know... Lush. There was vegetation. lush, there was ice, like... I. I, I, let's see some originality with the planet design and the settings. I think that's just as important because at its heart, Star Wars, I think, is also a Western. 
um, more than anything. It's a western and a part a cereal. It's it's really just sort of a bunch of stuff in the blender. And that's, and that's the really blender. what Lucas based them on was the old, uh, old sci-fi cereals. cereals. Flash Gordon cereals. He yeah. wanted to make Flash Gordon and he couldn't he make it. He borrowed a little bit of, uh, of uh, Asian culture with uh, right. the, the for no, Hidden Fortress. Hidden Fortress, right. And uh, that, I mean, very very loosely. But um, yeah, yeah. It's it, he's really good at blending all those things. And I think... The thing that's interesting about the first Star Wars movie is it's a combination of everything that came before it. So it's a, it's like westerns and comic books and old movie serials and superhero stuff and religious stuff and it's kind of influenced by the the Frank Herbert book Dune. All these influences from other places. But all the Star Wars movies now are just influenced by other Star Wars movies. So I hope that works. It could be a little thin. I don't know. And can we please get a Jawa in the next Star Wars movie? We didn't see it. I didn't. That see would a be Jawa. fun. It'd be fun to have a Jawa. I thought there was. I thought there was going to be Jawas, but they were something else. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thanks so much, Gabe. I appreciate no it. Problem.